Hey everyone. Now I'm going to set up this uh, music room here and go through it with you. So obviously I've got a few instruments here already, but uh, it's not finished off and I thought it may interest you in how I'm setting this up, so I'll make a video of it. So anyway, I'm just going to film this over time as I, as I do bits and finish this room off. Now I've set up my main computer here and, and the same desk that was in the other room, uh, complete with the, the microphone that I got. And I've also mounted a TV up on the wall here because there were outlets there. But I haven't finished that off because you can see the cables hanging out and I won't stand for that. So the first thing I'm going to do is tidy up that TV. All right, so behind you, I've got a Raspberry Pi sitting, just sitting there on the TV, powered off the network. Uh, there is an antenna socket there, but I don't actually watch TV on here, so I'll never use that. So I won't worry with that. But what I do want to do is get sound from the Raspberry Pi and send it down the wall so I can go to the amp for the speakers. So what I'm going to do is run a cable next to that power point and send it down the wall. And what I mean by that is just got the cable here and I'm going to mount one of these little um, things here so I can put the cable through and send that down the wall. So the cable will come out going to the Raspberry Pi and then drop down the wall and come out to this. Well, I've got one of these down the bottom here as well and just pop it out of there. So as you can see, these cables are obviously temporary because that's an absolute mess. Um, but that'll be a work of art by the time I'm done. And you can see those white cables coming out of the wall there. They go up to the speakers on the ceiling. And that's also where this uh, RCA signal cable is going to come out. So you can see some of the speakers on the ceiling there. You've got the left, center, and the right one. So that's where those cables go. Right, so on this side here, that's going to go there. And get the cable down to the bottom there. And just like that, it's installed. So now the audio cable can come out of the Raspberry Pi and go down the wall to the speaker box. So I've just got to tidy that up now. Okay, now the tables are all tied in and under control, so that's finished. Before I neaten up the computer, I'll just show you around the back here. I've got a couple of USB expansion cards in here to give me extra USB ports directly on the computer. Because I don't like using USB hubs. I like to avoid them. So this way I'm not short of USB ports and I can plug everything in. Alright, I'll start at the computer because that's kind of the core of everything here. And uh, I'll just go through what I'm running here on the desk. The sound device is this M-Audio USB sound device. So it has a couple of outputs at the back that go to these speakers currently, which are going to get upgraded to the amp. And in the front, I have two inputs that come from an analog mixer. At the moment, they're unbalanced until I get some balanced cables to plug in there. So this is the analog mixer. And what I've got is I've just got a couple of instrument inputs here from an electric guitar and a bass guitar. And then I've got a stereo input here from the electric drums behind me. And I'll have another one here from the electric uh, piano next to me. So those analog audio inputs come in here. I just mix them to whatever level. And the output is what goes into the input on the sound card to record. This mixer next to it is a MIDI mixer. So it's just used to control programs on the computer. So for instance in Reaper, if I move the controllers here, it just moves it on the screen there, you can see. Rather than me getting a mouse and having to try and do this manual over here. I can mute things, solid things, and just move them up and down. On this side is another MIDI mixer, or a bit of an all-round sort of thing. So I've got uh, four sliders, some turning knobs, some pads, and some keys. So it's just handy there to have on the desk when I want to do something quick and easy. Now the keyboard has um, MIDI output here, just USB MIDI to the computer. And I also plan on having the analog audio going into that mixer once I get the cable. But the thing about that is I have to use the headphone socket on the keyboard. It doesn't have a line out um, socket on it. I may in the future pull this apart and get to the preamp and put my own line out on it. But um, that may or may not happen. Probably won't. But we'll see. But anyway, I can record the MIDI performance and then use a um, synthesizer later on to make the sounds. All right, here I've got my um, drum kit. So I've got my acoustic drum kit over there and the electric drum kit here. Now, this uh, has a few issues that I've got to fix up, namely the hi-hat and the hi-hat pedal. It's not quite right. But um, I've got the analog output on this, which does have a line output, going into that analog mixer that I showed. So just have a bit of a play. And the good thing about this, of course, is I can, I can stick headphones in it um, from the headphone, headphone socket just here and play this in the middle of the night, so... You get the idea. Um, now that's the analog output. It does have a MIDI output as well. And I may or may not use that, but I'll show you that it's got a bit of a, 
a weird design floor, I'd call it, um, with the MIDI. So I'll show you that now on the computer. Right, so here's the cable for the MIDI, not plugged in yet. And if I hit it, the sound, sound comes out. But as soon as I plug this in, and then try and use something, it gets the first one through, but it's not actually coming out anymore. There's no analog audio output. But if I unplug it, it catches up with everything I did. So I, fi I figured out what's going on. I'll just put it back in and show you on the computer. Right, now if I'm monitoring that MIDI uh, data and I go and hit the drums, they work fine. The analog audio comes out and of course the MIDI MIDI's going to the computer. But if I stop um, listening, if you like, stop accepting MIDI um, events and then go hit it, you get that first one out, but then I'm tapping the drums over here, but no sound. And then if I start monitoring the MIDI again, it catches up with all those things that I just did and continues on. So that to me means that it's uh, audio sound stage is after the MIDI one, which seems a bit backwards to me. So it took me a little bit to figure out what was going on there, but as long as you're recording MIDI, it'll put the analog audio out. But I don't plan on using MIDI out from the drums really anyway, to be honest with you. But it's just something I discovered. Now, of course, I've got my real acoustic drums here, so... Um, you just can't beat them, but they are, of course, very loud. And that's where that other kit comes in. But anyway, I've set this up to record this as well. So, I'll show you how I've done that. Right, I've got a microphone at the kick drum, or bass drum. Um, it doesn't have a hole in it like it would be ideal, but um, it does the job. So there's the first microphone. The second microphone is just above the snare here. And then I've got two overhead mics here to catch everything else. And they go into a couple of these M-Audio uh, sound devices. And I did a video on this once before, but basically what I've got is the two um, sound cards uh, mapped to one virtual card with four inputs. So I've just got a Raspberry Pi here, running off PoE, no monitor, no keyboard or anything. But I have a sound device in there called, that I call Multitrack, and it has four inputs, which is the four inputs from those four different microphones around the drum kit. So now on my main desktop, I can just SSH to that uh, Raspberry Pi with a dash capital X so that its um, X display, which is basically the window in graphic display, gets sent to this computer here. So now I'm on that Raspberry Pi, and if I start Reaper, it'll display it here. And you'll see in the title bar when this comes up that it says on Raspberry Pi. So there's, it's not that responsive, but it doesn't have to be. It's responsive locally within itself. So what I can do is just um, set up four tracks and then for the recording in, I can just pick which of those four mics is for which track and I'll just do one, two, three, four and record it. And when I save these files, they're not saved on the Raspberry Pi, they're saved to... I'll just get out of that actually. Okay, so this is still on the Raspberry Pi. In uh, Documents, there's a directory that it saves things to called Reaper Media. But what I've done is I've just mapped that onto a server and so when I save files, so let's just go into it, you can see all these sort of wave files that I've been that I've been doing. And here's one here, so test I've saved out there. And what I can do is just get out of that, come back to this computer here, and open that same file, that test for git or whatever it was. Okay, I can just open that. And that's just me <laughs> very badly mucking around. But you get the idea. So that's not really taxing on the Raspberry Pi. It's not saving anything to its SD card. It's got a mounted network share that it saves straight out. And basically it's just an interface for me to record the drums, the real drums. I've got a selection of guitars. I've got the bass, electric, uh, acoustic steel string, and a nylon string. Now the bass and electric, I can just plug straight into the um, mixer. Same with that acoustic actually. But um, the acoustic or the nylon string, I can record with a microphone as well, so I need somewhere to do that. And what I did, as I've shown as well before, is set up a walk-in wardrobe as a recording booth here. So I've just got a little computer in there from how I had it set up before. I've got to figure out how I'm going to set this up. But um, this is just for recording stuff that doesn't want an echo. So yes, I do play trumpet as well. Um, in fact, this is the knackered one. It's got tape holding it together. It still sounds good. So um, that's there. Now when it comes to the piano, you can't beat this. I've got a grand piano sitting out here. So the sound is... 
But I can't stick this in that room because it's a little bit heavy. It's about 400 kilograms. But what I can do is use those four microphones that I've got on the uh, drum kit and just bring them out here. And because it's only got a connect to that little Raspberry Pi, which is on the network, it's pretty portable. So if I really want to record this piano, um, I can just bring those microphones out here. Now, I forgot to mention this microphone here. This is not for recording uh, anything really. This is just for having online meetings on the computer, just so I sound good when I come through that. Which apparently I do. So that's just the microphone that's separate, its own little USB device, it's a sound card as well. But that brings me to the sound output. Now I was in this room just using this Logitech thing which goes to the speakers up in the ceiling, but what I've done now is I'm, I'm just using them to run um, the audio from Kodi just for that TV, so that's basically what that is. And the audio from this is going to the big amp that I had in the old room with the big speakers. So there's the amplifier sitting there, and I've got the big speakers in the corners here. So there's one there, and one there. And the reason I need them is because they're bloody loud. And if I'm playing drums, just playing along to something, they've really got to be cranked up for me to hear it because, as I said, drums are loud. But that's way over here. So I'd have to run a, an audio signal cable from the computer over to here. And I don't have cable to do that, even though I'd like it done that way. Um, ideally, the amp should be at the desk because that way it would be less likely to pick up noise along the way but I don't really want to have it sitting above the monitor like I did last time. But what I might do is slap it to the side of the desk, maybe. I'll see. So once I find a home for that, then the audio from the uh, computer will go through that amplifier and out the big speakers. All right, I've decided I want the amp over this end, and uh, I'm going to make a bit of room here just next to the monitor, but I will have to put it on its side. But that'll do. Um, it's over this end, and I'll just run the the speaker cables around the room to the speakers. I've got some pretty chunky speaker cable here, uh, 16 gauge, 100 meters. It's, uh, I should take it out of there and show you. Right, so that'll go from that amp, one to this speaker, and another one to that speaker. And today, I even got a tambourine. <laughs> what I like to do with the cables is just solder the ends so you don't get the strands fraying everywhere. All right, it's after midnight, but um, I've got to try it out. So the amp's up here. It stays on the volume. It's always on, and I just use the volume on the uh, sound card. So. Oh. Fuck them. Okay. That's cool. Might just play with the balance to hear that one a bit better when I'm sitting here. Right, now these electric drums work for the most part, but this hi-hat doesn't quite work, as you probably just heard. It does random things. Now, you've got the symbols over here. And I automatically want to stop them like that, like a real symbol, but that doesn't work. Uh, but the hi-hat here is not accurate. If you see in here what it's doing, it's all over the place. So I'll show you what a normal hi-hat is in case you're not a drummer. This is an actual hi-hat. It's the one that has the two symbols that open and close. So if it's open, it's rattling, and I can close it with my foot. So. Depending on how open or closed I have it, makes the sound different. Okay, so that's what that thing over there is trying to imitate. So down the bottom I've just got the pedal. Then on the electric one I've just got this pedal here that plugs in like everything else. And that um, tells it when I'm closing it or not. Right, so without my foot on the pedal, that's supposed to be an open hi-hat, so it'll rattle and be open, but it's doing strange things, hitting multiple times, being closed and whatnot. So if I unplug the pedal that's supposed to close it, it's still doing those things. So what I can do is just pull that out and just temporarily plug it into this one over here and show you how it should be. So that's an open hi-hat, and it only hits uh, when I hit it. 
only players want to hit it. Okay, now the pedal's unplugged, but there's obviously something wrong with, with this hi-hat over here. First things first, I'm going to take this off and pull it apart. Alright, so I can see, I don't know if you can see, the piezoelectric thing down there. Yeah. It just gets smacked around and then it has weight. I'm just going to resolder these connectors here just to make sure. So if you can see that on the left there, there's a bit of crap on the connector. I'm just going to try and clean that with some metho and see how it goes. Right, I've just given that a clean with some metho and a lot of crap came off. And I can see it's a, a lot cleaner than it was a minute ago. So I'll put that back in there and put it back together, see how it goes. I can't tell what state it is in there, but and just have to be what it is. Right, I did that and I noticed it's still doing the same thing. And I thought, I'll turn it down. So it's still doing the same thing. And I thought, well, maybe this cable's a bit dodgy. Just turn that down. So you know how sometimes these cables break in there. So I took it out, had a look, and then I noticed that. Let me zoom in here. Let's see that. It's like, oh, come on. It's like the, um, the connectors inside have actually I've chipped away at that. They can really feel that, that groove that they've made in there. So it's cut the enamel away from this plug. That just means I've got to replace this plug. So see if I can hunt one of those down and change that. But, um, at least I have the clean inside anyway. So that's a, that's a bit of a mess. Well, I've just cut that cable here and I'm going to put uh, a new one of these jacks on there. So it's just a stereo. Plug there, which I need to buy a lot more of for the other cables I've got to make around this place. That'll do for there. I've just cut a bit, um, left a bit on there, so I can bell out the meter which colour goes to where, and I'll just put the outer casing on before I begin so I don't forget. What to in here? Looks like a standard sort of headphone cable. Yeah. What you'd normally have is your right, left, and a ground. Okay, so I'm going to assume this is like a headphone where. That's probably that one. Yep. The red is probably what would normally be right, which is the center one. No, oh, it's asked about. So the white, white must be the middle. Okay. So red is the tip and white is the center. It's all there. So now that both the wire and the connector's got soldered on already, just got to heat that up and dab that on. And the heat shrink will go over, and I'll shrink that down. Do this and we'll shrink that around the cable nicely, just like that. Half ah, right. All right, it's still playing up, so it still does that that stopping sound. It works when you hit it. So what I figured out is if I pull that little ribbon cable out. It just stays as a normal symbol. That part works. If I plug in the other one, I'll show you what that little ribbon does. All right, so there's a the broken one. Um, this one up here, I've just connected it to. So if I hit it normally, my cable works. That's how it's supposed to sound. And the ribbon um, connector would be for when you grab the symbol. It actually imitates grabbing a symbol to, to stop it. So you can do that. But I'm never going to use that on a hi-hat. So rather than go any further with this, I'm just going to leave that ribbon cable unpl unplugged because I won't need that on a hi-hat. Okay, now that brings me to the second problem with that hi-hat. It's working fine for an open hi-hat, which is what it's normally like if you're not pressing the pedal on a hi-hat. And to close that, you press the pedal, like the real one over there. But this doesn't really work unless I really slam down on it. So there's a part in there that I have to replace. So I'll do that now. Right, I've got the pedal here. I'm just gonna pull these 8,000 screws off. This is what's in here. This rubber thing, which apparently gets ugh, gross, really kind of hard after a while. So I bought a new one. These are different. That's a smaller one. Still flexible, this one just doesn't move at all. All right, so that seems to work. If I just close it itself, it's like, it's like closing those hi-hats over there. 
So without the pedal pressed, it's open and closes nice and easy rather than having to really stomp on it. So open it, bit closed, and that's it. So um, the drum kit pretty much should be back together. Now I'm glad I fixed that because it's been sitting dormant for a few years now and it's a bit of a bit of a shame because it does have its use. As much as I prefer the acoustic real drums over here, these are good for night time so I can just chuck the headphones on and smash away. But one thing you noticed is even though I needed a part for that, I got it pretty easy just off eBay for a few bucks and it wasn't like the mentality of companies today like Tesla and Apple where they don't want you fixing anything. I'll fix, I'll fix it if, if I've got the parts to do it. So, you know, a standard plug for the symbol there, fixed it. Um, part wasn't standard, but it's their part and they'll sell it. So now I can use this kit into the future. So it makes me also like it a bit more as a, as a product, you know, so I didn't get the shit saying I have to deal with God knows who, God knows where, for how much. So um, I wish things were still like that, but uh, only the good companies seem to be doing that. So yeah. They'll learn one day, maybe, with right to repair.